Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 109 of the Eve's Drop podcast. There's a lot of recording going on today. Maniac streaming. Seth's over here recording a, a piece for uh, the main recording, the most important recording. Is it's happening, happening right now. Right here. The fuck up! <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> I don't mean it. You know I what know I mean? You don't. I was but, saying before the podcast started, you just like yelling. You've always been like, since I met you, you yeah. just. Since high school, you too. like just being a little annoyed. Like I don't like it at all. You know what? I, you do, do I? Though. Do I like it? I think I think, I think I've grown to like it. I, yeah. I, I, you well, know you've what? been that way for like the eleven years I've known you. I don't think I've ever seen you like chill. Chill. Never. Maybe like once or twice. I could count it like on one hand. Yeah. No, I I don't know what it is. I just that's just some my, people just like being you know. Well, some I don't like amped it. Up like fucking. I'm not amped up. I get amped up when people tell me I'm amped up. Oh, now he's getting keep, amped up. Keep going. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. Let's get the podcast started. Big timer. Yes, sir. This episode is brought to you by Burrow and DraftKings. Look, we're moving on up on the podcast. Ever since we won the Esports Industry say, Awards. Some big name sponsors. Yeah. Yeah. Look, ever since we won the Esports uh, show. What, what did we win? Esports Awards for Best Show of the Year. Best podcast uh, of the year? No, just show, show in general. Yeah, like can, can nobody Even compete? Better. I'm nominated three times this year, Big T. I don't five if you include Optic altogether. You know what I'm saying? We do work, man. Uh, yeah. this, it's just it, it's 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 what it's always been. The way that it's always been. Last time you and I sat down to have this conversation, a conversation like this, just solo dolo, was January of 2019. It was that long ago, bro. I just looked when we at, sat in the thing. I don't even over know. There? Is that where we sat? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. I think that was the the eaves route. We've done we've done a sixty fifty. Oh yeah, we did do that. But yeah. but like a solo dolo, like catching up with Will. What's been up? Like that, yeah. a, a lot of people have been requesting this one specifically because one, you've disappeared for the internet for about eight months from uploading. We see you on 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 uh, on Instagram. You know, obviously we see your stories. I upload your face all the time to my Twitter. You do. I noticed that. I appreciate and then that. You, like, where mainly are you? the the church. Yeah, the church one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. today Saturday. So tomorrow I'll schedule a thing. I, I have will it. be skipping church just for anyone. Um, what's up? Ask. What's up? What's what's been up? Just not a whole lot. I uh I got a dog. Yeah, recently. Well, let's new, first start at, with dog. the with the with like where have you been? Like, you know what I mean? Like people people. Uh, mostly, where can they find you? You know what uh, I mean? I've been uploading a little bit on my second channel, so yeah, the Green, Green Wall Street. Street channel. Been doing a lot of um, trading stuff. The market's just been, it's been nuts for like the last 18 months, really. When the market crashed, um, there's just so many new people. I mean, even like, even people here, like when the Dogecoin shit yeah. was going off, there's so many new people in the market. And it's like, everybody was sitting there. It's like you're sitting in a like a poker room yeah and you got it's full of professional poker players and then all of a sudden you look over and like the market crashed everybody got into trading and it's like people that have never played poker before just walk in and just throw all their fucking money on the table and, and what, just, is, what like, are you supposed to do play. so you just look around and everybody's like just looks at each other and then you play and take all their money yeah so that's that's really been the last 18 months it's been um Every day, seven, eight hours a day, trading, running, uh, running Green Wall Street, and just trying to, trying to get it done, trying you, to take advantage. You know, when you walked there. in here, uh, I haven't seen you in what, like a month, two months. Probably when was the last time? Last time I saw you was probably like uh, at a pre-show. We did the pre-show, yeah. Um, you you did smell richer when you walked in, if I if I may say so. It's you, been a, you got your fucking pink flamingo shirt. It's been a good year. <laughs> what can you, I say? You dress differently. <laughs> yeah, you know <laughs> your glasses. Like, have no scratches. Clean glasses. I feel like a new man. I'm 30 this year. I figured it was time to just step up into the adult world and mm -hmm. clean my glasses and yeah. buy a new shirt. And, yeah. You know, it's good. Get a dog. Trying to move into a house, finally. Let, let's talk about still, the house, man. Like, still it's still not being done. built? Two weeks. It's, it's pretty much done being built. Monday, I have the final walkthrough, and then they said the 15th should be the closing. It's been pushed back three times. So how long has it been taken to be built? 15 months. 15 months. Yeah. That's how long Seth took. Really? 15 Seth. months? Scump. I thought I was getting... How long did your house take to build? It was six months late. Oh, well, maybe I'm not getting that screwed then. Because they originally said it would be 12. We signed July yeah. 31st. They told him the same thing. Yeah. yeah. So it's just been... He, he stayed at my house for eight months. You know what I mean? 
because he was he like moved that was eight months yeah he moved in two months before he was supposed to move into his new house and then they extended it for six additional months damn yeah it was uh it was actually kind of cool have him there because he would drive here he like yeah. I literally it'd it, be it, i never saw him yeah yeah i never saw him it, the only time i saw him was, was when we were in passing right it's like passing ships in the night or whatever saying that is yeah no it's been nuts apparently I mean, I was about to get mad because they'd already pushed it back twice. And then just recently, I was supposed to sign the 28th of September. I should already be moved in. And I went and I met with the construction manager. Apparently, one of the guys, there's like four or five construction managers for the, the builder. One of them fucking died. From COVID. From COVID. And the other one, my construction manager, the reason it got pushed back the last What's time. Was the one that gave it to him? Maybe. He's in the hospital. I don't know if he still is, but he was like in the ER about to be mm-hmm. in- incubated. Yeah. In- intubated 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 incubated means something else okay yeah he was he was really fucked up so i couldn't get that upset but yeah supposed to be uh supposed to be the 15th of october yeah so we'll see uh we'll see if we get it done and then i'll be uh, yeah if you like if you line up the weight yeah with how's the, the, it's like picture your foot i didn't know i was gonna have to work a balance beam but I there can, you go. I can do it. See, there as long go. as this platform right now for those audio, listening to the audio, Big Timers Michael was, was almost fucked him up. Yeah, no, it seems it. to me like a lot of things are trying to fuck you up. A you, little your, bit. Your yeah. microphone, you start, you start, you started bleeding, and it wouldn't stop. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. Just ever since I turned thirty, like if I just run into something, I just the, the welts, the bruises, they just don't go away faster anymore. I got this thing on my wrist, like I just barely ran into my microphone, literally, like. Bam, like this. Same mic. On, on I got the, the SM7B. No, it was on the hard part. But yeah. I just started bleeding and I was like, oh shit. So I, you know, like took a napkin and I figured normally like 10 seconds, you just kind of push down, you're good. So I did that and then I took it off. I looked like 30 seconds later, still just like gushing blood. And even now, like two days later, I still got a, a spot. Hey, have so, you gone to check your blood? You Maybe a hemophiliac. What? What is that? Uh, it means that you your blood doesn't clot easy, or oh. it, do, it takes longer, or it doesn't clot in some in some cases. Oh, I hope so. I also think I might have myocarditis. I don't know because I've been feeling a little bit. Let me guess, mesothelioma. You were fucking working nah, in asbestos fuck, and shit. Nah, fuck that shit. Just uh, <laughs> I don't know. It just a my, my, myocarditis. Yeah, with the heart thing, like you get the inflammation around the heart. I'm not saying it was a it was a vaccine thing. I don't think it was. But wait, did you get the you get, you got you're fully vaxxed? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Both. Both. Johnson Johnson? No. Pfizer. That's a trick question because Johnson Johnson it's gives you two. One. Yeah. What? Johnson Johnson gives you one. One. Yeah. Fuck. Pfizer two. Apparently there's like a pill now. I ain't taking that shit. And I'm probably <laughs> Bro, not getting the, a booster anyway. But. Yeah. I, at this point, man, I'm like, ah, hey, fuck it. Fuck it. Just put, fuck it. Just fuck it. Put Let's it in it. there. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I've seen cards that have polio shit on them. Like, when yeah. I was a kid, I got vaccinated. I asked no fucking question. Nobody started to control me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, and the, I didn't know shit about those vaccines either. Like, Blue shot. I didn't know how that shit. Yeah. Worked. I just bam, take it. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, 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 if if it was only happening in the United States where people were mandating fucking yeah. shots, then I would get it. But like other governments across the, the the globe are also doing it. And all you super Republicans and all you super liberals and all you super Democrats, this is not the podcast for you because you are gonna hate everything that I say because I'm right, right, right in the right in the middle. I was born in Juarez, Mexico. Well, I was born in El Paso, Texas, but lived in Juarez, which yeah. means that I've always been teetering on the border. I don't okay. know where am I. You know what I'm saying? Am I Republican? Yeah. I don't know. I like well, some I of the Democrats. You're probably a lot like me. Like socially, I get most of the the left policies and democratic policies. But you and I are capitalists. We've always been capitalists. Hell so, yeah. like, when it economically speaking, when it comes to you know the tax structure mm-hmm. and, and things like that, I really do lean more right. Yeah, I I like cap capitalism's the reason I was able to go Shit. from you know. There's Northeast Arkansas, the yeah, dude. I went from Juarez to here. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That like, can only happen in one. I have no choice, right? But to be a capitalist. Yep. If I didn't come from a rich family, a rich family was going to come from me. That's yeah. just the way that I was always going to live. I live my life. Yeah. You know, I got parents. You know what I'm saying? I got family. I got. I got. I got to make people proud. I get it. So get it. I'm with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, "Are so Republican? Republicans hate weed, unless they can invest in it and make money." Right. Right both over here love yeah. it you know what i'm saying it's my shit yeah so i get both sides but vaccine i'm getting that shit because we were in san francisco and apparently they were like the only city so far but they to eat out at a restaurant or even do any sort mm-hmm. of indoor activity it's mandated double vax fully yeah. for two weeks yeah so <laughs> we get tested here fucking once twice a week sometimes yeah you'll be doing those fucking 
real test too yeah PC, CPR oh, see bro the thing is is like it it never you never get used to it because it's somebody else jabbing you every single sometimes it's a short it's the person, nose right sometimes a short person going up into your nose sometimes you're sitting down and it's a too tall person like, bro yeah. i've gotten jabbed by all sorts of body types you really can't do the mouth Mouth I'd, ra I'd rather do the one that's for sure. Like oh, I don't want to. I don't want a false negative or a false positive. I want a fucking positive positive or a negative negative. I just. I, I don't want. I don't. I don't want to be out there. So, speaking on the politics stuff, you know what I've been really, really good at. Obviously, we know Hutch. Hutch is like a super fucking like. You know what I mean? He yeah. he sees one thing one way, and that's yep. it. Yep, yep. Tax the rich. Tax, tax my buddy tax. Hector. Yeah, that's his <laughs> favorite thing to say in his chat. Yeah, yeah, fucked up, and has the fucking nerve to say, "When are you buying me a Tesla?" I'm like, Can't I would, if you pay I would, if I got to pay all these, if I got to buy everybody Teslas, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm kidding. Uh, but what I do is that every single time a friend of mine from Texas, who's a super fucking conservative Republican, yeah. young dude, funny, like successful, like normal dude. He's You're just talking about somebody that you, that we know. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. we, we won't say because obviously like yeah. whatever, but we will say Hutch's name, Okay. but we're not going to say, you know, say my other dude. Cause I don't know if he's cool like that. Right. But every single time Hutch posts anything on twitter i'll copy that and then i'll send it to my republican oh my friend God. so that my republican friend gets super fucking tight about it and says well joe biden this and sends yeah. me something back from joe biden i grab that he sent me now i know who you're talking about and then i send it to fucking <laughs> such why don't you just put them in a fucking group chat and because i like being the fucking <laughs> the middleman just fucking pissing them off oh uh, yeah i think i know who you're talking about because I, I like you, you know you, you you talk about me like always being not not uptight but always being like on edge and like being like ah, like annoyed and shit yeah i like to see other people annoyed too yeah. so maybe i am a, an annoyed like wizard or something i just like maybe. putting people in certain moods yeah no I, I get it but they never see it coming you know what i'm saying i tell them what i'm doing who both of them oh they don't they don't get it they, they, don't they get continue it? to fucking argue with me or through me and i'm and but so, they've never spoken to each other no about, no 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 hell no you gotta, i mean i don't even know i don't even know if they like I, I think that they could get along fine oh, yeah. but yeah. when it comes to that like jesus yeah probably not when they're when you they're know what what politics. makes me laugh the most is like people that that i follow that have like almost no following they're always posting like yeah. yo you're not changing the world you know what I'm saying? Who yeah. you gonna who you gonna influence into changing? You know yeah. what I mean? Um, Talking into the void. Yeah, I don't. It I just it. I, I I sometimes just I, I've gotten so good at avoiding the internet that I just like don't. You know what I'm saying? Like I haven't been on same. Reddit. I'm the I same way. I haven't been on Reddit for like fucking eight months. Damn. Yeah. If at people all? Are, look, if people from Reddit want to find me, they can find me on Twitter. Yeah. You know what I mean? True. That way I can filter the mute button. Yeah, you just gotta pick your social media, but each one is like different. You know what I mean? Like Twitter is a certain vibe, Instagram is a certain vibe. Twitter is like Earl. Who was it? Earl Sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. Is that the videos? Like yeah. Twitter makes me want to fucking kill myself sometimes. Yeah. Like Twitter's just a certain vibe, and it ain't. It ain't a good one. Most days it ain't a good one. So I just choose to to pick my battles wisely, and just, mm -hmm. I've really tried to, you know, focus on the types of things I'm consuming every day because mm -hmm. it really does affect how you view the no, no, world you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. don't worry about it. you keep talking okay bitch. yeah it just it affects how you view the world and like what sort of mood you're in just everything that you read so i'm trying to be more cognizant of that and just try to consume real stuff i'm not trying to like live in a fucking happy bubble yeah i know sometimes the world sucks but damn i'm just trying to be chill and like happy most days you know what mm -hmm. i mean and it's hard to fucking do that on the internet especially if you're a person of popularity yeah you got so much i mean i don't really have any hate coming at me but yeah you know a lot of people a lot of people do yeah i i, I i've gotten really good at just not doing just, just like not it out no oh, look when 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 leaks happen for example yeah. i immediately get off twitter i'm just not on twitter yeah. so like, i got work to do man i don't got time here to fucking one i'm not gonna explain myself yeah on something that i can't explain you know what I mean? I can't get mad at somebody for fucking assuming shit and sounding like fucking moron. Right. Because they, they're operating under certain, you know, pieces of a puzzle. They don't have the full they picture. They do not have the full picture. Right. right. So so their assumptions are, one, wrong. Yep. No matter how right they are, they're wrong. You know what I mean? So yeah. if I can't educate them on what's right and if I can't prove them wrong. No point in trying no, to dude, even dude, engage. Because no. then once you engage, it's a whole other thing. And then you fall down the rabbit hole and like. Yeah. I, I go through the same thing sometimes with with trading obviously it's a pretty controversial deal and there's a lot of you know it's a really hard 
thing to do. And I don't shy away with from how hard it is. You hear like the story, like 90% of mm-hmm. people fail, 95%. There's some people who just literally, whether they've tried to trade before in the past and they failed at it, or they just read like a study or a piece on the internet that you just cannot convince some people that something's right. So like I'll post a trading video where I make, you know, three grand, like for the last 18 days, I haven't lost money day trading, mm-hmm. 18 day winning streak. Like at a certain point, it's just luck doesn't explain it anymore. But you yeah. try to explain that to someone who has their mind set. They're like, it's not possible. Yeah. You can't do it. Yeah. And at this point, I'm like, I'm not even going to waste the fucking energy I, trying I to it. convince you. I'm literally, I do it every day. I don't need yeah. to fucking convince yeah. you. And I'm sure it's, it's like that with a lot of stuff. So. Yeah, is, is, there, weird, is there a reason why your three grand a day isn't thirty grand a day? Uh, well, it's just risk mainly. It's just what you're comfortable with. So, like, you know, you can start an account, and there's like, there's kind of guidelines to go by to make sure you never like blow up your account and lose everything. A lot of it is like one percent of your account per trade. That mm. way, you'd have to lose a hundred trades in a row to blow lose, up. Yeah. Um, but as my account just kind of grows exponentially. My appetite for risk doesn't mm-hmm. because right now I'm still risking what I did last year, but my account's up like 700% mm-hmm. just because I'm not, if I want to make 30K in a day, I could scale up to that point, but I got to risk 30K in a day. And like when you're in the trade in the moment, it has to be an amount of money that you're okay with losing. You can't think about it. I, yeah. I compare it to golf a lot. I was watching, um, I was watching the Ryder Cup and I think it was. Roy McElroy or something. It showed how much money he was making for the year mm-hmm. and it broke it down to like how much they're making for the year, how much they're making for the tournament, all the way down to per shot. Mm-hmm. And it was like $4,400 per shot. And I was like, to put this in trading terms, he's not thinking, every time he gets up to the ball, he's not thinking like, oh 4, shit, if I hit this, $4,400, $4,400. $4, mm-hmm. $4, he's thinking, I got to bring the club face back. Mm-hmm. I got to keep it mm-hmm. close. Like he's focusing on the task at hand. On the game, yeah. And trading is the exact same way. If I could just get people to disconnect from the fucking money for like five minutes and focus on the thing, focus on the process of trading, they would make money, but they can't. They get in a trade. And if I tried to make 30K in a day, I'd be thinking, holy fuck, if this doesn't go right, I lose 30K. And I just completely forget how to play the game. Yeah. So I'm just at the point where like, you know, per trade, I'll risk 500, 1,000 bucks just because I don't even think about it. It's like, whatever, I just play the game and two, three, four K a day is like, a lot of fucking cheese. Who the fuck too? needs more money than that? Not me. Yeah. I just. No, I think. Yeah. I mean, you can. Yeah. Eventually, I'll, I'll get to that point. But you know, I don't try to. I don't try to rush it. Yeah. Just let it happen organically. We were talking, dude. I w- we were just talking about this yesterday. At, at, uh, we we went to go get Korean barbecue, and we were talking about how there are people out there, and I'm envious of them sometimes, that they're just happy with like living right like as long as they can make ends meet and go to the theater or go to the park with their dog or spend saturday and sunday with the family and only doing family and in a small apartment regular fucking car they're happier than fucking mega rich motherfuckers who have all the fucking worry in the world i was watching um been watching this guy on youtube his name's alex hormozy i think but he owned uh it wasn't quest nutrition but it was like a chain of fitness Mm -hmm companies gyms or something and he's he's worth like i don't know 40 50 million dollars and earned like hundreds of millions and really really smart dude um so i've been watching a lot of his videos but one of them was talking literally about that like he broke down how much money you need to live like the fucking Mm -hmm. the life fly on private jets Mm -hmm. have a ferrari do all this it actually 40 million no it was like 200k a year like once a week eating at like a really nice restaurant Mm -hmm. he broke down like literally a rolls royce payment obviously you're gonna have other stuff besides this that would add up but it's not you a single man yes this was one okay one person okay but um essentially his explanation because he's met those mega wealthy people who are miserable and he's met the the people that don't make enough and his uh formula i think was just haves over wants and it's not how much you have, it's bringing down how much you want. Because you can always get something else. And if you're always wanting more and more and more, mm-hmm. you'll never find that happiness. So instead of, I mean, obviously, we like making money. Like, you need to get to a certain point, in my opinion, which is a lot compared to most people. But, um, you know, if you can just bring down the the wants a little bit, mm-hmm. then, then you can find the happiness. I it's like the lot. difference in the 3K and, and 30K. I'm like... Would I like to make 10K a day, 15? Sure, but like, do I need it right now, right yeah. this moment? No, I'm fucking good. Yeah. 
Yeah. Bro, I, I, I struggle with that because I can always see something better. Like oh, the, yeah. like the hex quarters. It'd be really cool if we can break some of this up and have like a, like a fucking, you know, right now we have Maniac screaming. Yeah. But then we lose that. You know what I mean? So like I, I, like I can see where we can improve the hex quarters. Yeah. But I also don't want to improve the hex quarters. Now my garage, for example, like I like my garage, but would it be better if it was a warehouse that I bought instead of the garage where I can right. not only fit my boat, but I can also fit, right. you know, uh, sleeping beds. <coughs> yeah. Pardon me. Hold on. It's a little Texas allergies. <laughs> yeah, the pollen's bad today. bro. No, man. You know what's crazy? All right, so we can prove like the like a warehouse would be better. Yep. Uh, my house is is nice size house. The dogs are comfortable. Big, huh? I said it could be twice as big though. Yeah, it could be twice as big. Bigger backyard bigger for the dogs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it it could always be. And it's like that. How do you balance that? Because obviously you don't want to stop. It, people ask me all the time. They're like, why don't you just stop working? Or why don't you just only trade? Why do you do all this other stuff? It's because. On one hand, you know, you want to be happy with what you have, but on the other, there really is no going sideways in life, especially mm -hmm. financially. Mm -hmm. You're either like with inflation, I mean, just think about inflation, like you're either going up or mm -hmm. you're going down. Yeah. So it's better to just be fucking going up yep. and spiraling up as, as fast as you can. But yeah, it's it's trying to balance that with, with happiness. Cause I know I'm the I'm the same way. Like I love my apartment right now. I'm sure yeah. I'll love the house I'm about to move into, but I'll still always be thinking about what's next what's next yeah. even my car and like i will just not take care i don't know if this is you too you take care of most of your shit i don't i think i'm just fucking look at that yeah it's pretty pristine but me like my tesla is in shambles mm. right now just the inside of it because i'm thinking to what's next i've been looking at like the bentley bentayga and i'm yeah. like fuck that Ooh. shit looks pretty nice and it, i know once i get it i'll be thinking about like a rolls royce and i won't take care of the bentley so i'm just not like mm -hmm. i'm not living my life in the moment, I'm always looking at what next, what is next. So I'm trying to do a better job of appreciating what I have, but mm -hmm. still working towards uh, whatever's next. Whatever my dad have. and Jude have said that I'll never be able to stop. Says that I, yeah. My dad says that I have a, a, a worm in my asshole that always keeps me moving. Yeah. I was like, Pop, that's, those analogies. <laughs> I don't know about the analogies. Yeah. But I, I well, in, it. in Spanish, it sounds funnier. You oh, know what okay. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but... You know, with Pine Park, with Optic, yep. with all the Guggen stuff, with right. the good, good stuff. Like you're all... always looking at the next thing. And and, and the, the I, I think I've gotten to the point to where like my brain is, my advice is worth more than my time for them. Yeah. Where they don't necessarily need me to be, you know, packaging fucking or designing baits or no, doing that. Not. But it's like, you know, from, from what I've learned in the last decade. Like I've gotten lucky a lot. You know what I mean? Like I'm, 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 plays I'm, a part, sure. I'm looking to get lucky a fourth time with Pine Park. Yep. You know what I mean? Like that sort of thing. But yep. at this point, I, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, it's not, it's not even about luck. It's not even about like, it's not even about like I know that Pine Park's gonna be big. <laughs> it's a, it's a growing market. Yep. I, I have an audience that even if ten percent of that audience partakes yep. in that, um, and and for me, it's like about creating and sharing more within here because the more that i'm able to make out there the more that i can improve what i do at optic and how yeah. we do optic right and just that mindset that's <clears> why <throat> i don't consider it luck i forget who i was having a conversation with but uh, we were kind of looking at um and uh, i mean i won't name any names in particular but we were talking about like everybody that went on to see like you know reasonable amounts of success mm -hmm. after playing like call of duty or, or halo or something and it was like luck of course plays some part in that but a lot of it too I think is just the ability to recognize opportunity and act on it. Like there's been certain like crossroads that we've had throughout the years and the people that have seen the opportunity and taken that right path, whether it was through luck or just the, mm -hmm. you know, strategic decision. Yeah. That's what, you know, that's how people are seeing success now and other people kind of fall by the wayside unless they just chose to do that. But I know a lot of people, you know, just, um, they either don't see the opportunity or they just don't act on it um, whenever it's there. So, I mean, yeah, I would totally um, not be surprised if Pine Park blew up. I wouldn't put that on. It, bro, it, it's done already. Yeah. Bro, the amount, like after that. Are you selling right now, by the way? No, it, like, we, it, the, the, the launch is October 16th. 
Okay. Oh, right? so, it's, so it's like not this weekend, not well, not today, this weekend, not the following weekend, but the weekend after that. That's the day I move in. Yeah, I'm gonna be. Well, what's the house party? I want just to make sure that you let me know about the house party. Ahead yeah, of I'll time. get some furniture and shit. In the yeah. Well, um, I'll we'll tell you a little bit. Any well, burrow there. may be what you need to. We'll t- we'll talk a little bit about that in a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, but because of because of the success that we've had, and and more importantly because of my track record of what we have done, right? As as optic, what you know, our strategy did for Google and what our strategy is done for good, good, what our strategy yeah. has done for all the other teams that came after us. Like it's it's a proven concept that not only works in gaming but outside of gaming too. Right. Anything, so yeah. yeah. So so for me it was it was like an easy approach. And once people see the plan, once people see the approach, they're like, fuck, yeah. this isn't just like this dude slaying, you know, weed and shit. Not this true. is like a bigger a bigger thing. Yep. Anyway, long story short, because of the amount of you know different CEOs from in the cannabis industry that were at the launch party, because of the amount of uh, movers and shakers from the cannabis industry that were at the party, and the way that they saw everything, the way that everything got explained to them, yeah. the numbers that they're seeing, they were just like Psh, me, can like me, yeah. exclusive, no exclusive, you know, you know that sort of thing. Right. And again, it isn't about. Uh, the only reason I said is like I'm looking to get lucky a third time is because I want to emphasize on the fact that this isn't motherfucking luck. Right. Okay. I say that so people can fucking think. It's the same thing with yeah. trading. Like at a certain point, it's not fucking luck nah. anymore. It's no. Nah. It's strategy. It's the will and determination and like fucking persistence. Yeah. The the you implementation of a strategy yeah. is the execution of it. Is execution's that execution's huge? Yeah. Um. So the the reason I say this is like oh I'm looking to get lucky a third time a fourth time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, just keep saying it. Yeah. Like, I'm looking to get lucky that 13th time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> if I could just get lucky one more time. Yeah, no. I, yeah. yeah I hear what that. I think what I think we've all done a really good job at is not overblowing up. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're in this, like, Seth, like, I think he went a little bit too far into He's the fame little, side. I love my little niche. Like, yeah. it is the happiest <laughs> yeah, I could possibly be. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. not famous. Like, I've I got an audience online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I make plenty of money to be happy, and I just kind of fly under the radar low-key, yep. live my life. I was in Napa, just, like, walking around the winery, and I was just thinking, like, this is fucking perfect. This yeah. is exactly Bro, I love, what I want. I love that every so often, it's like, Hex, what up? Yeah, or like green what what up? Right. You know what I'm saying? That sort of thing. Just like a couple times a yeah. week, maybe or yeah, a couple yeah. times a month. Yeah, I'm cool with that too. And 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 a lot of people sort of get lost in the sauce and they search for something that necessarily may never come, and yeah. that's going to create sadness. Yep. Or they are in a position to where happiness isn't necessarily mm-hmm. ever going to be in their grasp, right? Um, or they realize it too late. Like I'm fucking, I just turned 30 years old, and I'm thinking like, holy shit, people die all the time i don't mean to be morbid but they yeah. die all the time at 60 70 years old so to think i may have lived half my life already like i'm ready to fucking enjoy it and yeah stop chasing my tail a little bit it doesn't mean i'm like ever gonna stop yeah. working hard and yeah, doing yeah, things, yeah. but trying to find the balance and just enjoy it while i'm <clears throat> more more than ever now i think that i've started to try to find that balance like i've yeah. Like, uh, uh, this year was the first time I ever went to my jacuzzi. You know what I'm saying? After really? three, uh, three years of this, I mean, fourth year in Texas, three years first of living. Time? Yeah. And that, but in the pool though, like I forced myself to yeah. like, I'll be like, Liv, you want to go swimming? She's like, yeah. And I look at the sun. There's no clouds. So I'm definitely jumping in there. Yeah. So I'm not afraid of the sun. You know, the sun treats me differently than it treats you. You the know what I mean? And I do not have a good relationship. Oh, I know. But, uh, but like I would get home at like fucking, you know, two and I'll look at my calendar. And I'm like, I have a call at five. Yeah. I have three hours. I'm just going to go in the pool. And I'm like, Jude, live. I'm going in the pool. Yeah. You guys can join me if you want. And more often, you know, they they, they, they wait for me to make that move. And then they're in the pool, too. So I'm like, no, fuck. I'll jump in with you. Uh, just uh, Louis, the, the Pomeranian. Is the only one? Yeah, the Pomeranian. Everybody else is. Yeah. But, uh, I think uh, Benji also jumps in there. He's a golden doodle. Um, bring, uh, bring Archie, the, the Bro, you should, man. I was going to bring him here, but I was like, ah, he's a lot, bro. Yeah. Like, pup, I knew puppies were a lot, but mm-hmm. little French bulldog, like, stubborn fucking yeah. puppies. It's like. You should have got, like you should have got smart dog. He's not dumb. I'm, he's I'm, I'm stubborn, fucking kidding. <laughs> he's stubborn as shit. I'm kidding. You he's know what's so crazy smart. is that you don't want a smart dog. You want to, you, yeah. you don't want a, a, a overly clever yeah. dog because that, like, like Buzz, Seth's dog. He's a little too smart. Fucking mega smart. Yeah. Yeah, because he's uh, what uh, golden? You know, he's he's a uh, golden retriever. Yeah, golden retriever. Okay. Retriever. Mine's a golden doodle. Yeah. And he's the he's the alpha, right? Not Henry, the biggest one. Yeah. Henry's like the one that's just like doesn't care. He's just yeah. chill. It's like you know what I mean. He's but Buzz, Buzz is mega smart. So he's curious. He gets into shit. Yeah. He's just fucking active, right? 
And so, I, you know, I was like, I'm fucking playing video games. I'm fucking. So now we have my brother-in-law, uh, who's been tremendous help, goes to his house, who lives right in the same neighborhood, uh, goes, picks up Buzz, give, takes him a fucking long ass three mile walk. By the time oh, he okay. gets, by the time he gets back, and this happens to my dogs too, and I didn't know about this, right? Like dogs, obviously, sense of smell is like a, a major part of them. Yeah. So if you take him on a car ride, for call it twenty minutes, thirty minutes, the amount of smells that go into their fucking brain or yeah. senses gets them so tired because they're like that's that that's that that's that they, they get it maybe gets that's them. why my dog I, like he'll be like panting in the car sometimes mm-hmm. i don't know if he's just afraid of yeah the car the but pan, some pants, of it is maybe... panting usually means nervousness yeah yeah uh he's but if you scared, but if not but if he gets used to it yeah he'll he'll learn to enjoy to bro because dogs all they want to do is smell shit i didn't know i was reading something the other day actually it's been maybe like a month ago but it was really breaking down how much they smell i knew mm-hmm. it was like i don't know 200 times better than humans He said dogs, literally from the smell of, like, another dog's pee, they can find out if it's a male or a female, if it's healthy or not, like, if it has any diseases, if it's uh, in heat and, like, ready to mate. Like, it's literally like a fucking Facebook profile for dogs. Yeah. Like, sniffing their... And and it's not like they have rational thought or full rational thought. So you can imagine it's just data being dumped in there, and they don't know what the fuck to do. Just imagine, bro, like... You you see it'd be like me looking at some of your graphs like yeah. fucking I, I just see it I intook the image I don't know what to do with it right. that's what dogs are uh, they possess up to three hundred million olfactory receptors in their noses compared to about six million in us six Damn. they have three hundred million wow humans have six Hitch has one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, that, uh, uh, that was a good one. <laughs> but imagine, like, imagine you bring in a hot, I don't know, like a bag of food or something. Oh, around. Well, that's, that's the way. So where are you going, a Big T? That's not, you know, we're both taken. No, a bag of food, man. The dogs probably, it probably just lights them up, lights their brains up. They're, um, what do you call it? The, the medu- olfactory sensors? Oblongata. The medulla oblongata. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, imagine, I just... It is insane to me the amount of, like we were talking, me and Formal were talking about this yesterday, like uh, animals, just octopus, like my octopus teacher, you've seen that, yeah. that that Netflix documentary. So good. Bro, the fact that they only live 12 months. but the, the 12 months? Yeah, 12 months. Uh, yeah, 12 months. But in those 12 months, their rational thought, their way of thinking, their feelings, their ability to morph into anything and everything that they want, that's fucking insane. I didn't know it was 12 months. So yeah, they're they, like coming out the womb smart. Yeah. Like, they are born smart. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Because w- w- when you think about fear and hiding and, and those sort of, like, defensive mechanisms, like, some of that you can attribute to to uh, to just instincts, right? Yeah. You're, you're, everybody's born with fear. Yeah. Fear is essentially just instincts trying to protect you from fucking jumping off a whatever. <clears throat> but these fucking octopi, I don't know if it's octopus or whatever, but octopi, like are, like, grabbing shells and, like, covering themselves, oh, hiding yeah. themselves, morphing, getting soft, soft tissue into horns hard horns bro i didn't how, know they could do that yeah dude it, it it's inside i i stopped looking at it because i love calamari you know what i mean that shit is good though. you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> uh, i had so much good calamari in san francisco man the seafood out there was well let's talk let, let's talk about the vacation uh, in a little bit when do you when do you actually move in you said three weeks, two um, weeks from now? final walkthrough is on uh monday and then uh supposed to have closing on the 15th so probably got movers coming in the 16th all right. Well, if we'll I let's get the mortgage. All right. Well, let's let's do this. Let's let me go on a quick commercial break. Let me talk about Burrow, which you may benefit from because it's furniture, right? Wow. It's not yeah. not just any furniture. It's the following. And Burrow, being the sponsor of this podcast, shout out to them, is a company that is setting a new standard for furniture, right? For easy to move modular designs, timeless American, mid-century, and contemporary Scandinavian. You know what that is? <laughs> I, I don't. Jude does. Um, in a premium durable materials like responsibly forested hardwood, top grain Italian leather, and reinforced metal hardware. Because who doesn't want like their house to look uh, like sharp edges and smooth surfaces, like super, super innovative product design, right? Uh, Burroughs in-house design team takes a research-driven approach to make sure that the furniture fits your lifestyle, which translates to things as simple as mounting guide posters for the index wall shelves and a tool-free assembly process. Tool-free. 
You don't have to worry about where's this Allen wrench, where's this screwdriver, none of that. No, a modern shopping experience also, right? Berg got rid of the floor, of the far-flung warehouse stores and high-pressure showrooms and replaced them with a modern, easy-to-use website where you get to create and customize your own furniture without even leaving the house, which is even better for me specifically. Uh, free shipping for all. Every order, no matter how small, how large it is, it is delivered directly to your door for free which can save you well over $100 when it comes down to it, right? Especially if it's a large item like a couch or like a refrigerator. Well, it's, refrigerator's not really furniture. You know what I'm saying. Uh, world-class service. Obviously, they, they pride themselves in being uh, a company that takes a customer-facing approach, which means that they care about you. They care about your furniture. They care about making you a lifetime customer. Therefore, they spend a lot of time making sure that not only do you have a good experience uh, during the shopping period or the design process, but also in the delivery and also, obviously, afterwards when you get to live with the stuff inside of your house. And right now, thanks again to Burrow for supporting the show, by the way. But right now, our listeners can get $75 off their first order at burrow.com slash hex, that's H3CC. That's B-U-R-R-O-W dot com slash H3CZ for $75 off at burrow.com slash hex. Now, the link's going to be uh, listed in the description down below. Just kick, click on that. Remember to use code hex to get your 75% off, and that's H3CZ. One more time, that's B-U-R-R-O-W dot com slash H3CZ for $75 off. Big T, if I don't see a piece of furniture from Burrow in your new house, we're going to have an issue. I mean it. Support the show, man. I mean, you've been here for long, 12 years, 14 Um our next sponsor, Super Psyched, Super Psyched, DraftKings coming back. Guys, you guys don't understand. You know what I'm saying? I've had athletes sitting right across from me, basketball, football. We're in football season. My team is one and two, hopefully to be three and two or two and three. I don't know the math. Three and two, two and two. I'm hoping it'll be two and two after this weekend is what I'm trying to say. Uh, last week's is in the books, right? Now it's time to review the tape and prepare for this week. There is no better place to get in on the action than dr with DraftKings, official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. To add to this week's excitement, DraftKings is giving away free shots at millions of dollars in total prices up for grabs. If you haven't tried DraftKings yet, this weekend is the weekend that you have to, right? Listen to these amazing amazing opportunities that you're about to get, right? If you head over to the App Store right now and you don't want to miss this, if you don't, you, you got to go to the App Store right now, download DraftKings, use code eavesdrop, and you're going to get some goodies coming your way. Draft your lineup and feel the sweat like never before. Every run, every pass, every catch means way more with DraftKings. It's simple. Just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Nothing adds more to the excitement of watching the game quite like having a shot at millions of dollars in prizes. Millions of dollars in prizes, right? Now, think about it. Like, every single catch, like, think about how awesome it's going to feel if you're one of those people that ends up winning the the, the millions of dollars in prizes. It, it'd be sick. If you haven't signed up yet, what are you waiting for? Get in the game right now, right from your couch, your chair, your desk, wherever it is that you're sitting. Download the DraftKings uh, Daily Fantasy application right now and use code eavesdrop. That's E-A-V-E-S-D-R-O-P. For a limited time, new users can get a free shot at millions of dollars in prices this week. Don't miss out on all the week's action. Enter code E-A-V-E-S-D-R-O-P. That's eavesdrop, like the podcast, uh, to get a shot at free millions of dollars in prices with your first deposit. That's code eavesdrop, only at DraftKings. Make it rain. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for more details. And the link, as always, is going to be uh, listed in the description down below. DraftKings Daily Fantasy app. Download it now. Use code eavesdrop. Let them know who sent you. Please, let them know who sent you because they will continue to promote on this podcast. And that's what we're here for. Entertainment and obviously, you know, sharing stuff with you guys. Big timer. Do you Are you are you a big gambler? Do you gamble? Not really. Not really? Just gamble in the stock market. And it's not even gambling. I mean, a 13-day, 18-day winning streak? The way I try to explain it to people when they say, that's the, the main thing I get is trading is gambling. Yeah. And I ask. I don't when, believe it. When you go to the casino, mm -hmm. is the casino gambling? No. Why not? Because the odds are in their favor. That's what trading is. The casino assumes risk. Yeah. And they're happy to assume risk. They know that they might lose on any given night, any given hand of blackjack. But they know that over time, because they're playing a game in which the odds are in their favor, 
they will make money. Mm -hmm. The gambler is taking risks. You can certainly make trading gambling. I walk in here and everybody's buying fucking Dogecoin and shit. Like, will it go higher? Will it go higher? Yeah. I don't fucking know. I don't. I don't partake in that. Mm -hmm. I assume risk, so I find high probability opportunities every day, and I may lose on some, but over time, consistently, as long as I stick to that over and over and over again, I make money. The problem is that's fucking boring. Most people don't want to do that. Most people want the thrill, the rush, yeah, like, yeah. fuck, maybe it'll double today. Or yeah, maybe yeah, it yeah. won't. I just I got over that because I got tired of fucking losing. So You, you learn how to mitigate that risk and that's just it. turn that into greens. Well, what what about you? You've never, from what I know, you've never gotten into like cryptocurrencies and. No, um, people ask me that a lot too. It's not that I like dislike crypto or. or Do you understand it at all? Because um, I'm a, probably I, not I as as much as I should, but it's just because what I do is so risky. I own my own business. That's risky. YouTube, Twitch, streaming is risky. Day trading is risky. So when it comes to like my long term investing. I would rather give up potential upside in something like crypto for more safety because, you know, you only got to get rich one time. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in trying to lose that shit. So I'd rather funnel it into something, index funds, real estate, buy an apartment complex, earn 7% and that's it. That's, yeah. that's all I need. So no, I know I, I'm probably missing out on a lot. And no, I really don't understand it or fucking NFTs. I don't get it. Maybe I should because people are just buying fucking JPEGs and making like, well, yeah, see, dollars. that's the thing. People get offended when you say shit like that. Why? I don't know, because it, it's not what it is. It's like an uneducated uneducated way of saying it, which is fine. But how else do you explain it? Like, no. that's how I explain it, with literal nothing but respect, right? Yeah. I don't understand it. I talk about how I want to be yeah. in the NFT space. One, I'm an artist. Secondly, I like... I get it. We buy... You know, I've bought skins yeah, exactly. on the internet. I've done that, but that's the, thing the moronic is, part about it. Yeah, right. That's the moronic part about it. And so we I, talked, and we talked. You and I, like, w when when uh, Bitcoin was starting to like fucking blow up, call it four years ago when yeah. we first got here. We were talking about heavily, yeah. and and I'm like, look, I get it, but how do you cash out? Right. How do you turn that Bitcoin into cash? Now, obviously, it makes sense because you have Coinbase, you have all these other right. wallets, right? But with with NFTs is the same thing. Like I know what it's like to collect artwork, right? Like yeah. I, I'm I'm I've been doing it all my it's life. It's essentially the same thing digitally. I mean, I was watching. Uh, I think it was Gary V. Mm -hmm. uh, one of his Instagram posts, and he essentially was trying to explain it to a group of people. V he friends. He was like, people will. Uh, yeah, he sold one for like 1.2 million. He was like, why do people go out and buy a Rolex? Some of them, of course, are going to appreciate like the craftsmanship of the watch and mm -hmm. how well it's put together. Most people are trying to fucking flex and say, hey, look, I got a Rolex. I can afford it. NFTs, same thing. Do you need a fucking picture on your profile? No, of course not. But is it nice to have it because other people know, yeah. you know that it costs a million bucks and you yeah. can flex it on your profile? I yeah. get it, but I would. I feel like I would still rather flex shit in real life. Than yeah. If I was ever gonna do, yeah, that. I'm, I've been I've been curious, but I don't have time to educate myself on it. Fuis apparently like knows everything about NFTs, yeah, right, which is awesome. Fuis and I haven't done a podcast since the first podcast that we did. Oh, you got to get him on. He was uh, like bro, episode one. Wasn't yeah, there's, there's been 109 episodes. Damn. Well, episode 100 still needs to needs to be made. Yeah, uh, I I I struggle with skipped that one. Yeah, I skipped it because I either wanted to do a 60 50 one with Nate, you, everybody, okay. or I wanted to do the uh, the okay. Dynasty team with uh, Seth, Karma, uh, formal. formal, and fucking Krim. Yeah. But obviously, like, the that whole. Happen. Yeah. I mean, m maybe now because they all get along now. Oh, like, they? Yeah, okay. they do. They do. Cool. Um, but uh, but I skipped it. It's still. So I, I literally skipped episode 100. So episode 100 might come after one of. 110 or 115 you just never whenever like stars align that like that's when it's going to happen makes sense to me and and it sucks because covid put like a super damper and I, i'm sick of talking about it and, and blaming it but it did anyway um yeah so so as, as much as i like because i know that given the right opportunity like i can create an nft project that can hopefully compete with all the other ones yep um and and uh, and hopefully we'll be able to do that. But I want to understand. I don't just want to create something and, and fucking just let it, it. Yeah, yeah. like ah, uh, like one of your pieces sold for fucking quantum ethereum's and shit. People can tell too when it comes to like putting stuff out on the market. I mean, you know, when you just try to do something and you don't really care about mm -hmm. it, you don't know enough about it to really appreciate it and dig into like the dirty little details. The market can see that in like how much mm -hmm. effort you're putting mm -hmm. into it. So if you really want something to be successful, you. 
you need to fucking eat, breathe, and sleep that shit. That's why yeah. I've seen way more success with like Green Wall Street than Capra or selling clothes. Like, yeah, you know me for eleven years. Do I like fucking clothes? Yeah, I look at you wearing a flamingo. I do got the flamingo it. shirt on today, but like, I don't know. You know, when it comes like Aaron, for example, he knows like everything about clothes. He knows what's in style, like the stitching, the different fits, and because of that, he's seen a lot of success with mm-hmm. Rich and Lonely and all the other brands that he works with. For me, that's trading. For somebody else, that might be weed or Pine Park or something. You just got to find... The niche. Yeah, find whatever you can actually, you know, dive into legit. Probably see more success with that than me trying to draw a fucking NFT or mm-hmm. something. People be like, what is this bullshit? I don't know. Yeah. I, the the V friends from Gary V are the ones that are like super dope to me because yeah. he was the one that drew them. Oh, he did? He did. And apparently, and again, I'm a moron, even though... Uh, Ty from his crew was in town and we went to get tacos and we talked extensively about it. Yeah. Uh, like I still, I'm still a little bit, I'm still missing one piece. I understand collectibles. I understand digital collectibles. I understand yep. it all. I just don't understand like this. There's something in my brain that's missing a piece of puzzle of information that will 100% get me fully cut up. Wait, so what's the question? I don't know. Like is, is, uh, I, I don't know the question. I don't know the question. I just don't understand it. As much as I read about it, as many videos as I watch about it, as much as I hear fucking banks talking about it nonstop. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, like we said, you know about skins yeah. and like weapon skins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing, just outside of Counter Strike, outside yeah, of Call yeah. of Duty, on the internet as a whole. Yeah, on the internet as a whole. That's what it is. Yeah, but is there a Instagram, for example? If you go to my Instagram page and I post a picture of this, you yeah. know that I own this. Yep. Yeah. Is there an Instagram for NFTs that's like, this is my, is there a wallet website that you have a profile and then you can go into your, your, your gallery of all the shit that you own and then you have information on there as to what you bought it at and what it's going for. Like that sort of thing. I know thing. there's a way to authenticate it. Like there's a yeah, way minting. to see that you yeah. actually yeah. own it. But as far as like showcasing it, I think in that, what was the Open game? Sea? Everybody was buying the land and... With like Minecraft? Mana? No. They were like buying actual, oh, with like uh, Ethereum, they were buying yeah, the land. Wh- it was the game. But apparently you could showcase like your NFTs in mm. the like homes on the... See, that's what I mean. Where is this world? I know yeah. that at some point or another, we're going to be ending up in a player one sort of... Uh, we talked about it in the Optic Podcast. That's where we're at now. AR, VR is where we're going to be, right? That's where we're going to be. Like if I wear something yeah. in game, like that's what it be. For example... This shit right here, by the way, you you didn't receive it, what? but you're about to receive it right now. Okay. The the, the optic phase oh. collab. Oh, okay. This has your name on it, Big T. Very nice. Appreciate uh, you it. didn't get it, but like if you buy like this, right? There's a limited amount of these made. Yep. Right. The boxes are even fucking valuable, apparently. Right. right? And I I fucking somebody here threw out one of them, um, but at the same time, like I just don't know where exactly you're going to be displaying like these things or like why it, i mean like twitter right now obviously it's twitter profiles instagram profiles but at some oh point oh my god yeah. fuck you are displaying it already you are you're flexing as your snoop dog bought a thing and yeah. it like it's a, a crip yeah toe. with a crip punk and he probably paid millions of dollars he's flexing it on his profile he's got it yeah and, and people know that it's a million dollars. Yeah, like so he's flexing his car. Bro, that's actually, his... okay, see, like right there, a little bit unlocked. Yeah. And as common sense as it is to you experts, it isn't to me. I'm 41 years old. I try to keep up as much as I can, but I can only do so much with everything that I fucking yeah. have going on. Yeah. But like Nature obviously bought the Thief, which right. is fucking dope, right? Yeah. And let me see if he's still if he's still flexing it. Because um, it's not even nascent to 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 uh to twitter this no, is... it will eventually branch out to like what you said if there's another world that you you play in or it might be like all online games you know will start allowing you to put those as your you know profiles and yeah yo he's got a he's got a pretty cool bio nate shot does is retired fast food cashier turned professional gamer founder and ceo of 100 thieves and la thieves that's pretty dope that's good retired food like fast food cashier. yeah dude <laughs> that's his last job was that yep that the, the did we ever talk? Did you ever have a job? Um, uh, sort of for like a summer, yeah. Yeah, I swept the streets. I read water meters. I remember one time I pulled up a water meter. Fucking snake came out of the water meter, tried to attack my life. I knew at that point that was not for I you. I wanted no no part no of that. Part of that. But I will say though, something about I don't even know if it was what I was doing, but just a hard day's work 
nothing feels better than like waking up at 6 a.m. and I go and like manual physical labor for mm-hmm. like eight hours, mm-hmm. 10 hours. You get home tired as fuck, but damn, you sleep good knowing like I did that shit. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to do it tomorrow. I know, I'm never going to do it again. I know exactly but, what you mean. Yeah. I'll never do that. I won't nah. even help friends move. Nah, fuck that. I'll pay somebody. To do I it. pay for my friends to have movers. Yep. He's like, yo, you help me move? Yep. <laughs> I show up with a truck and two dudes. He's like, yo, who's that? I was like, that's I'm your like, help. Yeah, I'm like, that's 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 me. That's those are my avatars. <laughs> those are my in-game avatars. You know what I'm saying? They're here to they're here to do yeah, do no, a I'm job. Same way. Um, you were just in L.A. out there with uh, Rambo hitting the links. San Francisco, yeah. San Francisco. Yeah, we flew into San Francisco. What was that about? Just out of Blue Moon, let's go on vacation? No, I had had that planned for shit. And eight, he tagged along? Eight months, nine months. Well, he used to live out there. So mm. he was there before before we were for two weeks or something like that. Um, now, so my girl and I flew into San Francisco, and then her and I went up to Napa Valley, um, did the whole winery and food thing, ate at the French Laundry, which is like, World renowned Michelin star yeah. restaurant. Was, was it good? It was fucking dope. Because yeah. the shit that you were seeing, I'm like, that's not enough. I mean, it's like ten courses. So it was, was ten snacks. Nah, it's it's a lot of food. Trust me. Um, but, I, I, from what I saw, I can't trust you apparently because literally it was like a it's so a clam. It's so with like rich. fucking p- basil and yeah. parsley and shit. Yeah, yeah. A little yeah. squirt of something. Make it's it just, It's so heavy, rich French food that it was. Uh, it was a lot. I felt kind of sick after. Um, but no, it was good. And then we went back down to San Francisco. And then I met some family. And uh, Ray and his wife played golf at um, Half Moon Bay. Yeah. The Ritz-Carlton on the ocean. Yeah. We did a couple courses out there. And then, Wait, the Ritz-Carlton in San Jose? Um, Half Moon Bay. It's right yeah, there. Bro, next I went to, to Half Moon Bay. Really? Half Moon, yeah, it looks like a haunted place. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, bro, I was there. Really? I was there for the, uh, for the, for the Kuntox rally. What is that? I was there driving a Ferrari for a whole week with me and DeSoto Mike. Like recently or? Uh, yeah, like fucking three, five, five weeks ago. Like five a documentary weeks? just released on DeSoto. I'll link it in the description. Wait, well, was I there then? No, no, no you weren't. Was, no, like, no, no, no. Ago, no, it was way after that. It was way, it was way before that. On the ocean? Like ocean On the front. ocean. There's links fucking everywhere. Yeah, you, we played that golf course. Yeah. That was the one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where the, like it was the 50th anniversary of the, of the Lamborghini Countach. Oh shit! Yeah, so you drove one? I, no, apparently, and and no offense to those who collect them because there was like fifty of them there. Yeah, actually, there was like three hundred Lambos that were there. Super old school, no AC, so they had to drive with the doors open. Yeah. Anyway, I was I was there. Damn. What room did you stay in? Oh, he didn't stay at the Ritz. Well, we did stay at the Ritz, but the one in San oh. Francisco. <laughs> you saw that? <laughs> oh, different uh, one. Yeah. Um. All right. So you 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 weren't able to come to Pine Park. Why? Uh, well, for one, I had my girl with me there and that was the day we were flying back. I also had a puppy that was brand new and mm-hmm. I had to look after him that day. And I also had a meeting with the house inspector mm. on that Friday that I'm moving. So well, the party I was apologize Thursday. I couldn't make the, the you party. Did, you but, did, you did. I missed um, you, man. I know. Everybody was there. All uh, my good friends were you there. You need to throw something a little. All my real friends were there. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throw something in Dallas. I'm there. No, you can't throw anything in Dallas for the All next right. two to three, four, five years. It's illegal here. Well, we don't have to partake. Yeah, you, it's Pine Park. You have to. We can. Pine Park. Celebrate the success and the launch. No, nah, I don't drink anymore. Oh. I'll drink a beer or like, but I don't drink like ramen Cokes. I don't drink. You don't I, drink Bacardi Cokes. Not anymore, dude. Get the fuck you out of here. You know why? It's, I'm, I, I don't want to know why. Because you get to that point in age where you just oh. don't recover the same way. Oh. Yeah. Like my, my last, my latest hangover was a month ago. The wife and I went out to dinner with, uh, with our neighbors. Okay. So Super. you do go on dates. I convinced you to go on a date with you your did. wife. That's crazy. You it did. Was fun? Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, we we always gone on dates, but not like a grown up date. You oh, know what okay. I mean? Like with other people oh, you that like you don't really know, the, yeah. but you want to get to know. I don't like doing that shit. No, <laughs> I don't want to get to know anyone. You went to on a double date with Rambo and his girl. Yeah, I already know them though. Yeah, you go on a double date with me and Jude. Uh, yeah, I do that. Yeah, yeah, we should. Anyway, we went out. Uh, I took him to this super fancy restaurant. So my my, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. yo, well, here, here, here in Dallas, uh, the Charles, Charles, the Charles. Is that in Frisco? No, it's in Dallas. Oh, okay. It's in the Arts District. Oh, bro, it is fucking fire. Good. Well, first of all, try to make a reservation. Okay. You know I like food. I'll get a reservation. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Of course. You know me. We can get your reservation. I know the owner, Lechas. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So this dude also owns uh, El Carlos. The Mexican spot? Okay. 
or Don Carlos. Anyway, the Charles is this fucking incredible Italian. Bro, I'm telling you, I, I felt like I have never had Italian pasta until I sat at that fucking table and I ate what the fuck I ate. Felt like you needed to wear the tracksuit. No, have you seen the I, video? Which one? Where he's like, uh, where's the baba goosh? Where's the baba ganoush? <laughs> that one? He's like, you motherfucker. No, no. <laughs> so good. Bro, man. but I sat down, I ate that shit. I was like, I could, I, my, my brain, I'm like, I could not, in my head, I could not understand how I had never really tasted what Italian food was. Do you remember what you had? Like a, it was the red pasta, man. It was well, we had sauce. like we had. I'm like, yo. Well, well the the cool thing there is, and 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 the cool thing that you get to do sometimes, if you work hard, is that you get to get there, and then you could be like, well, what do you want to eat? And then you can say things like, I'll let the chef take me on a tour. Yeah. So the chef will take you on this fucking tour. Right. It'll fucking cook shit up. It'll bring shit up. Throw this at you. Throw yep. this at you. And then here's the main course. Here's the second main course. Third main course. Fucking steak at the end. Like, bro, it was amazing. So you did that. You just let the chef decide. Yeah. And just brought stuff. Yeah. But he didn't bring me the pasta this time around. Damn. The original one. Oh, okay. So what ended up happening is that I said, uh, my neighbor... Um, he's like, yo, what, he's like, you want to drink something? Like, yeah, of course. So they ordered cocktails. And I'm like, let me try your old fashioned. You know what I'm saying? Because okay. old fashions at the at the private club here in Frisco, yeah. those are fire. That's You've your favorite. It. It's my favorite. They they snapped. Really? At the Charles. They snapped their old fashions at the Charles played no fucking games. So not only good, that's how you know a good restaurant. I, I mean, first I, when you get the bread and then the drink, you know if the bread and the drink is Well, there's good, no bread. It's, oh. it's a fancy restaurant. It's real. They don't tease you. They don't, they don't do tea, No, they don't try to fill you up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They want you to taste it. They ain't afraid. Okay. So call it, I don't know, call it nine to 10 old fashions by the end of the night in the, Damn, in the, cor- in the course of like three hours, right? There's a difference in drinking and Blacking, blacking out. out I brother. blacked out. That's fucked up. Yeah, poor yeah. Jude. She was the one who had to carry my two hundred and fucking twelve pounds right now. Did you Uber back home or No, they... she drove. She oh. wasn't drinking. She's not a drinker. Yeah. Um, but we drove back and apparently like I was fucking talking. I'm like, baby, I don't remember getting home. She's like, What? You were talking your ass off. And I was like, Well, that's what I right. do. Second second nature at that point. I was just like <laughs> fucking trying to make people laugh. It was like the party we went to for the Guggen thing. My girl when we left, she was like, Heck spilled his drink on me and just kept telling me to take care of you or he's gonna come after me. And I was like, second yep, time. That's, that's uh that's my guy. I didn't mean to spill. No. I didn't even notice. No, it's all good. Man. So I quit drinking because I don't drink just to drink. I drink to get fucked up. I've always been that way. I don't do things half ass big time. You know what I'm saying? I'm like two glasses of wine, two drinks, and I'm good. In LA I just like to enjoy in it. LA what I really got into is like smoking a joint and then drinking one tecate, one okay. beer. Or a modelo or a or a corona. That would have you feeling just, no, just right where you need to be. Yeah, like Yeah. Yeah, like I, I already get in in a in an immediate better mood yeah. when I'm like when I when I take a, a couple of hits. Like I, I get immediately my mood changes. Yeah. My creativity sparks. And we were talking, me and uh, former were talking about this yesterday. Nothing related to, to weed or anything. But we were talking about how how smart a person has to be to be funny. You know what I mean? You can't just be funny. I mean, obviously, like, there are dumb people out there that do stupid shit that make yeah. you laugh. But to be clever enough and fast enough and quick enough to And the timing and, like, delivery the timing, of the delivery, jokes. Yeah. yeah. Like, it takes a clever person. Yo, I'm glad that you're not wearing what the fuck you were wearing last night, Hitch. Well, you see what he was wearing? He was wearing fucking no. spandex that you buy on Instagram. Okay. For oh, you're you, talking about the for you for those who, don't show him. For those of you listening, Hitch, the just, booty Hitch, ones. Hitch just walked in and he was wearing some. Those are the booty hugging ones. Yeah. Let me see. Never mind. I saw it already. I'm good. <laughs> I, I resisted it just fine. Yeah. I could not believe it. this dude. Fucking wild. He got on my tables, table dancing and shit. Just double cheeked up on a Thursday yeah, afternoon. Yeah, man. It was like it was it was crazy anyway so we're talking about and like what it takes to do that and i I thought about like the earliest memories of me being a young kid and i'm like i've always wanted to make people laugh but there are people out there that are just like when was the last time that uh let me see a rate race actually funny i don't know who the fuck do you hang out with that i can i don't know i was like i was like yo what was the last time that matt made you laugh like my matt oh he's hilarious no my matt which matt my matt my camera Oh, okay. I and thought then, you were talking about formal. No, and then formal. formal's like, he's like, only when he laughs. And I'm like, yeah, but he hasn't like gone. I was like, there's people out there that are just like there to laugh. And right. people that are there to make people laugh, right? right? So I'm like, oh, I'm one of those people that are just like, can't help but to go out of his way to make people laugh. Yeah. 
always looking for the joke opportunity yeah like, man yeah. in in the darkest of situations too which is why i, I hate funerals kind of <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's That's so cool. bad it's my favorite kind of um humor. Man, I, I I had a whole bunch of stuff to to talk to you about. Let's but talk I think, about it. We could do a fucking long episode. No, I, I mean shit. It's like I have financial collapse incoming. It's like who the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> I hope so, bro. I short shit. <laughs> what? Down, I make money. Yeah. Um, I was I was thinking about financial about the, the 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 amount of the amount of stuff that that has happened in the last like. Three years has like has reshaped what the way that not only that we live but the way that we conduct business yeah. from here on out. Are are people gonna be coming back to office spaces? Like, like what happens to those to those you know to that real estate to the to to that real estate right? Like the commercial real estate. Yeah, like, commercial real estate feels like. I mean, I don't know shit about the commercial real estate market first of all, but it feels like because of what you said, that shit's gotta be. Coming to the market with a lot of supply and not a lot of demand. Yo, Maddie, do you know do you know any jokes? It's like off the top of your head. No, yeah, me neither. Yeah, you don't know. I don't know all the jokes. Like you just grow like up, random jokes. Yeah, like you grow up and you tell jokes. Mine's more just like saying funny shit and yeah. just like slipping it into a conversation. Yeah. But it's got to be like yeah, you know. Instant. No, but when people say, "Tell me a joke." Like you yeah, couldn't I, tell I don't one? got no jokes. No. I got like fucking five ready to go at all times. I'm not gonna go do it right jokes? now because it's it works better. Because I'm a what do you call a physical comedian? What do you call them? Oh, okay, you got to be moving around. And with, I don't know. With the hands, just talking shit at this yeah, point. Okay. Um, you haven't uploaded to your YouTube channel in eight months, and so your main. I think one. I'm gonna get back to, to some to, your, some to your main ones. Yeah, I just I don't game as much. I don't have time to game. Like trading is my game right now. But I'm gonna try once I move to <laughs> to get back on the vlog game a little bit and at least show shit. But like. Even that, I'm like, fuck. Bro, the, it, 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 it'll take PC you 10 minutes there. to get from your house to here to vlog shit. So yeah. it, it, I used I to... I will be mad closer to here. Yeah. Be, yeah. Which means that you can literally, just for the vlog as your job, come by, hang out from like 11.30 to 1. Because if you come at 11.30, like people are getting off their phone calls. Yeah. People are, you know, finishing content. We're about to go to lunch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's good vlogging 11.30 to 1 might be good. That's when it's slow anyway. And I'm normally taking lunch. Oh, so, what, what, what's, yeah. your work, what's your work day like? I get to the desk at like seven thirty, and then I'm there till four. Damn, just caking. Because I've been streaming from like three to four at market close every day too. But um, doing a recap and shit, right? Doing a recap, yeah. Just How's that going? Good, good. Are you on on Twitch or YouTube? Twitch, Twitch. Yeah, maybe I should switch to the YouTube. Game. Yeah, a lot why, of people have been why switching. Why wouldn't you? I don't know. Well, a lot of people have been switching because one, obviously, it's YouTube, so obviously it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but two, um, so it's a good platform. You know what I mean? It's. Yeah. It's not what Twitch is. It can be. It isn't. Will it be? Who fucking knows? With Fwiz at the helm, I bet it will be. <laughs> Dude, Eventually. I thought so too. But the amount of shit that he's working on, like, yeah. like his YouTube shit's on autopilot. Right now, he's all about innovation. Okay. Which is like awesome, right? That's that why he, he knows everything about NFTs. Probably. Probably. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think, I, I don't think it'll be long before we start you know, doing NFT stuff. You know what I mean? Like we, we, we have a, a super interesting partnership coming up. Um, that's just going to allow us to sort of dabble in that world. Yeah. But I got a lot of educating too, because I don't like, like I said, like you said, right? Like we don't, we don't just like to do shit just because there's, there's money to be made, right? There's money yeah. to be made everywhere. And you don't want to be fake, man. Like when I stepped into, into, into the cannabis industry, man, like the amount of reading that I had to do, the amount of like, yeah, I'm, I'm here to help. Yeah. I'm here to be a part of it. I'm not here to do what you know people have done to the esports industry. Right. right? Just because you got take money, take, yeah. just because you got money, you're throwing shit around, and you know, like right. you, you don't abide by certain rules. I couldn't couldn't do that. Won't be that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, speaking of money making opportunities after the podcast, because I don't want to give it away, but you know those moments. It was like Minecraft. There's just sometimes you meet someone. It's like capitalizing on opportunity, like we were talking about earlier. Sometimes you meet someone, and I met someone in San Francisco. Say uh 29 year old dude just out there murdering it and just under the radar in a way that you really wouldn't think and it was like the minecraft thing when mm -hmm. we did it like people were murdering it with the minecraft servers and most people just had no idea and when you capitalize on that opportunity it can be good and i had one of those moments where i was like huh, huh. i'm glad i met you man. yeah like, now we'll talk about it because yeah. we just we, we told seth how much money we made 
in in the Minecraft stuff. Oh yeah, he was doing that with us. No, I'm like, I'm like, remember we? I'm like, I'm like, damn, I bet you feel salty. You didn't join us on Minecraft. He's like, well, I didn't play Minecraft. I'm like, well, you could have played Minecraft. We made a shit ton. He's like, how much you guys made? I'm like, oh, like 400k the first month. And he's like, damn. And I look over at like, yeah, it was me, Nade, Big T, and somebody else. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, we killed it. And then he's like, he's like, well, how much do you guys make total? He's like, around 1.25. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It was a good year. <laughs> <laughs> he was so salty. He's like, why are you bringing that shit up? I'm not fucking. It's like seven years ago. We yeah. tried to fucking bring you in. Obviously, it would have helped the yeah. server. But so, you, so you just hurting now. He's really hurting because he missed out for sure. No, yeah, that's, he he acts like he's hurting every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's 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 his uh, gift. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, listen. Uh, we're about to start getting into the season. Obviously, uh, Call of Duty is right around the corner. The pregame shows right around the corner. Some motherfucking pre shows. I'd like to be in more content and shit, but if we could just start scheduling it for like four. The thing five. is, is like by four o'clock, I have I would have already been working the I same know. the same hours as you. I know. I that's the that's the only tough shit. part. Yeah. Um, but we could we can figure it out somehow. Yeah. Anyway, Big T, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much to Burrow and of course DraftKings. Descriptions down below. Uh, check it out, Big T. Always a pleasure, brother. Anything you want to shout out? Uh no, I'm good. I hope everybody's um. Well, do you don't want them to having... make money? What's that? You don't want them to make money? You well, think I, they hate money? Uh, I don't think they hate money. I just, if you're interested in learning how to trade stocks, that's where I've been for the last 18 months. I do it every day. I dedicate my life to that shit. It's not easy. It's very difficult, but it can be rewarding at the end of the journey. So GreenWallStreet.com. Maybe we'll put a link in the description. Yeah, we do we'll run definitely. a five day free trial. So if you'd like to come on and Spend a week inside the Discord and um, yeah, trade use, live use with code, us. And, use code eavesdrop. Yeah, we could certainly make a code eavesdrop. And uh, yeah, you watch all the educational material. If you, you don't like it after five days, you can cancel risk-free. And you know what? No harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. You guys want the rewards? You got to reap them first. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Peace.